In this tutorial we're going to quickly walk through the process to cutting a full sided part out just using 2D 2.5D toolpaths. We'll start by looking at the uh, pocket jig to hold our block of material in place and that will ensure that we keep our part in line every time we turn the block of material over 90 degrees to cut the next side. We'll be looking at how we can create uh, the part just using 2D, 2.5D toolpaths or using the same tool, an eighth inch end mill. So let's just go to File and Close. So let's go and open an existing file. So from the Clock Tower Files project folder, we're going to open the clocktower.crv file. So here we have a vector file. If we go to our Layers tab, we can see we've got various layers. At the moment, we're currently looking at the outline for visualisation. So this is the shape that we are aiming for. So let's have a look at the various uh, different layers. So we've got main shapes in here. So this is the uh, face of the clock tower area. And we've got some vectors that represent uh, the fluting toolpath. This is uh, all of these vectors that we can see here. So this is how we're going to create the roof shape, which we'll talk about shortly. And then if we go to offset for pocketing, you can see we've got all of these green vectors in here that are going to represent the grooves in the tower and the main sort of shape uh, of the tower itself. And then we've got a layer called pocket to remove excess material. Okay, so that's just going to remove some of the excess material that we'll be left with. And then we have um, a pocket jig layer. And you can see that that is surrounding the entire job space. So let's just speak about that for the time being. So I'm just going to switch everything off and just leave the pocket jig layer switched on for now. So as we said in the presentation, we must create our jig for the part that we're going to create in the same session. It just makes it easier for us to get correct alignment and to ensure that we're very accurate here. So imagine this white space is our block of material because the first point of call before we do anything is to ensure that we get our block of material down to the size that our job is at. So we're going to have a block of material that's going to be 12 inches long, it's going to be one and a half inches wide and it'll be one and a half inches thick. So we're going to create this job space, which you can see here, so that's this space represented by the white area. And so for our jig, we're going to, all we do is simply create a rectangle that uh, follows the shape of our space. So we're just going to do a 12 by 1.5 and ensure that it's uh, snug around the job space. And then you can see here that what we've done is we've just created uh, some fillets and that's just to ensure that the tool can come in round to cut our pocket out so that our block of material can fit snug in place within this pocketed area here. And that means that we're going to get correct alignment for every time we turn our block of material over 90 degrees to cut the next side because we're always referencing from the same point which is going to be in the lower left hand corner right here. So doing it this way just ensures that we're going to have correct alignment right from the start of our job. So what I'd do at this point, now that we have our block of material pre-sized, we then need to go and cut this jig out. So I'd take this vector and I'd just simply go and open up a new session. So I'll go and open, if we just go and open existing file, you can see that we have a file here called clock tower jig. Press open. You can see we've got that jig exactly the same dimensions, 12 by 1.5, and that vector follows the job setup. And then if we just switch over to the toolpaths tab and just take a look at that pocket, we can see that we're going to have start depth of zero. We're going to cut down 0 0.6. We're working with 0 0.8 uh, MDF. So we're going to cut down 0 0.6 just using a quarter inch end mill. Just going to raster that and then we'll just calculate that. And then we'll go and run that over on our CNC machine. So that's the pocket sorted out. So once we've got that pocket, we can then start to think about the clock tower itself. So let's just switch off the pocket jig layer for the time being and we'll just switch everything else on. And then if we just go into the toolpaths tab, we're just going to ping that open. Pin that open there. I'm just going to the drawing tab. We're going to tile our windows and we'll go back to our layers tab. And then we'll start taking a look at some of the toolpaths. 
So first let's just go into our material setup. So you can see we've got a thickness of 1.5 because that's the block of material that we're working with. Our XY position is in the lower left hand corner. This is where we're referencing from so we make sure that's in the lower left hand corner there. Let me check some of the other options in here. Now if you plan to actually machine the example shown in this tutorial then it's very important that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available and the material that you are using. Ok so let's just go and press OK there. So before we just quickly run through all of these toolpaths, the really cool thing about this project is that we're creating a four-sided part. We're making a clock tower just using one tool, the 8th inch end mill, and we're just going to run the same set of ve uh, not vectors, the same set of toolpaths on each side every time. So it's going to be a really easy project to work with. So it's just one tool, one set of toolpaths that we're going to output all of those in one go and we'll just machine the same lot of toolpaths on each side at every time we turn that block of material over 90 degrees we just run the same set of toolpaths. OK so let's have a look at the toolpaths. So we've got this toolpath here, pocket rectangle square face. So let's just tick that just to see what we're working with. Okay, if we look in the 2D view you can see we're working with this area here, this area here and this square shape there. So let's just have a look at those. Now the reason we're pocketing out extra is so that we remove the material on the side and the reason for that is ultimately we want to create uh, a clock tower that has this profile. So if I just switch off the other layers and apart from the outline for visualisation. So this is the shape that we want to create. Now we can't just simply run a profile toolpath around this because that's going to eat into the side of uh, our block of material and ultimately that will eat into the next side that we want to cut into. So we can't do that because that's going to cut in and eat away at the next face uh, of our side of our clock tower. So we need to think about how we can create this look of um, this sort of stepped area here without using that profile toolpath. And so the trick to doing that is by setting specific measurements for the depths of cut. And we already have uh, information here of how we can get those specific depths of cut and that's all to do with the distance from our edge of our block to this sort of profile shape. So when we're working with um, the pockets here, so we're looking at these two toolpaths, so let's have a look, switch those on. Okay, so this one here and this one here, it doesn't really matter about this one because that's within the middle of our material block. So we could set that to any depth we wanted to. However, I'm just going to set it to the same as what we do for this top area here and this top step shape there. So let's just go into the drawing tab and I'm just going to zoom into this area here. So we want to cut um, at a distance of this point here, so the edge of our block to this point here. So to measure that we can just go into the measure tool and we're going to come over here, we're going to snap to that point there, snap to this point here and we can see that's at a distance of 0 0.075. If we go in there you can see we've got that cut depth in there, 0 0.075 in there. And so ultimately, when we cut down to that 0 0.075 and then turn that turn the side over, we're going to cut again to that 0 0.075 and then everything will match up and we're going to have a nice aligned um, and nice profile shape because we're setting these specific dimensions in here. So let's just calculate that and we're just going to preview that so you can see that there. The reason that this pocket vector goes over is just to ensure that uh, the sort of the uh, diameter of the tool goes over so we're not left with uh, rounded edges. So we're coming right out there just to ensure that we have a nice flat shape in there. OK, so let's just uh, zoom to fit on that one and we'll put that back in Z over there. So let's have a look at the next set. So we've got here pocket grooves. Okay, so that's just the detail in there. Uh, so let's just preview that one. Okay, so you can see it's just creating a decorative element to the clock tower. So I'll put that back in Z. Then the next shape is the main tower shape. So let's have a look at that. Let's just tick that to draw it. Okay, so you can see it's this main shape here. If I just undraw that and we can see what vector it's working with. 
and we can see it's this area here. So we've got another step shape in here. So we need to check the measurement between uh, this point here, so this corner here, to the end of our material block. So to do that we could just simply just use the measure tool and I'm going to take that snap to that point there and I'm going to go to the end and I believe we're at 0.15. If I just zoom right in there, yep, you can see that that is at 0.15 inches. Let's just check that, and we're cutting down 0.15, and that's again to ensure that we create this nice um, outline of our tower for when we machine each side when we come to turn that over. So let's just preview that one. Okay, so you can see these are very sort of basic pocket tool paths. Just going down 0.15, just going to raster that. We could just go ahead and calculate that. Okay, it's telling me that I have no vectors selected. That's okay. We want this one selected here. So let's just calculate that. And then let's just preview that. And we can see that shape there. Okay, you can see also I am left with a little bit of material on the side, but that's okay because when I come to do this side, it will just naturally fall off or be cut away. So I'm not too worried about that, uh, how much we've got there. So let's just close that down. And then we'll just put that back in Z and then we'll just zoom to fit on the 2D view. So let me move on to the pocket circular face. So let's just preview that toolpath. Okay, so let's just cut down the circle area there. Then we've got grooves on the main tower, so just going to create some more pockets just to give that main tower a little bit of decoration. So again, just preview that. And then we've got a profile here. So where's this profile? If we just tick that, okay, you can see it's just run at the bottom. We're just doing a single line just to cut uh, the bottom shape of uh, the clock tower out. So we'll preview that. Okay, so you can see that there. So that shape is going to run all the way around our clock tower and, that will, and then what we'll do then is we'll end up just cutting that away uh, manually so that we've got uh, so that we've removed the bottom sort of contact point and the top contact point within our jig. Okay let's move on to the next toolpath. The next one is fluting roof. So let's just tick that. Okay so you can see what that looks like. Let's just go in there and have a look what the fluting toolpath does. Okay, so this is the fluting toolpath. Let's just go to the vectors to see what they look like. So you can see it's just a series of lines that are created just using the array tool. So here you can see we've got a start depth of 0 0.075. So where did I get that number from? So let's just zoom in. Okay, so remember the first toolpath we created was this pocket area here, and we come in. Uh, at a depth of 0 0.075. So what I'm doing is I'm just matching that so we have a nice smooth transition between this area and the uh, roof part. So um, then we move on and we think about the flute depth. Okay, So the flute depth is going to be at 0.3. Okay, So that's going to start at 0 0.07 and then the flute depth is going to come down at 0 0.3 three to give us that roof effect. So that's a real cool way of creating uh, a sloped shape just using a 2D Trinavati toolpath um, and just using an eighth inch end mill. So we're not doing any 3D work here. And we're going to create a real nice roof sloped shape. Okay, we're going to ramp over the complete length. We're going to do that in a linear ramp type. And so what we'd do is we'd just calculate that and let's just preview that toolpath, so preview selected toolpath, and you can see how that looks. And the nice thing about this is because we're using an end mill, we're actually getting some detail here uh, from that tool. And so that just adds, uh, it's an added bonus really, because we are creating a roof shape, so uh, that's just quite a lucky thing to happen here to get uh, that detail there to sort of resemble a roof shape. So let's move on. Now we move on to pocket flat square. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so the reason for this is just that we want to safely remove this excess material uh, before we cut and create the uh, sort of tower shape. So we just need to get rid of this area here. So we just do a simple pocket toolpath. Let's just preview that. You can see that's done that there. And then we move on to the last uh, two toolpaths. So we're looking at the sort of final tower shape. And so for the 
top of the roof area here, what I could do is I could do another fluting toolpath. However, if I did that, I'd only have a very small amount of material left to hold uh, my clock tower into our sort of contact points, the end blocks of uh, the block of wood that holds the part in place. And so I'm going to avoid that and I'm going to think about just hand finishing uh, the top of the roof area just by creating a profile toolpath just as a guide so I know where to cut to create a nice roof shape. So let's just have a look at that so you can see I've got one that runs here and I've got one that runs here. So let's just preview those. I'm going to preview that toolpath and then we'll preview this toolpath and then let's just put that in Z and just maximize that and we'll just tilt the view so we can see how that looks. Okay so you can see we've got the um, sort of tower shape there. Now it does look a little bit odd at the moment because we don't really have a solid uh, top tower area here and that's because uh, this is one of the limitations to doing four-sided machining in the software is that we can't visualize how the part will be cut out ultimately I mean what I mean by that is by looking at all four sides at once we can only view one side uh, in the software now when we cut into the other side so we're going to cut this side here again we're going to be fluting in and we'll be creating that pocket so you've got to sort of imagine how the part will look so we're not going to have this area here so we're going to be left with uh, a, a tower shape that's formed from the pocket flat square um, po uh, toolpath that's going to run on all four sides it's going to pocket this side and it's going to pocket this side and then it will pocket this side as well so we're going to be left with a sort of a very a thin rectangular shape and then with this tower shape that's just going to uh, we're just going to have that there just as a guide so that we can manually uh, sort of cut that tower in place let's just put that in ISO view and so with all of those tool paths uh, in place we're happy with those we could then go and run that file so what we'd do is we'd close this down I'm just going to select all of those I'm going to use this option here to save tool path and then we're just going to output all visible toolpaths to one file because we're just using that same uh, eighth inch end mill tool. Then we'd just go ahead select the appropriate post processor and then we'd just save the toolpath. Save that in an appropriate name and then go ahead save it and then take it over to your CNC machine and then you can cut that out. Let's just close that down. And so that really completes this tutorial. And so you've seen how we can easily create uh, quite a complex four-sided shape just using uh, one tool, so the 8th inch end mill, a series of different toolpaths. We've looked at how uh, the depths of the different toolpaths helps determine the overall profile shape for when we go and turn the part over 90 degrees to cut that part out. And so now would be a good idea to go ahead and save that file. So let's go to File, Save As, in the Project folder, I'm going to save that as Clock Tower, press Save, and then you can access that from the Project folder.